Hi there, I'm Casey. I am a professor in an information science department and I love giving advice to graduate students. <laughs> I was about to sit down and make a video about dissertation proposals. Because in order to think about how to do a good proposal, you need to understand what a dissertation proposal is and how it fits into the overall structure of a PhD. So first up, what is a PhD? How does it work? What are the milestones? How long does it take? What do you have to do to finish, etc.? So like, what to expect when you're expecting a PhD? And if you're applying for PhD programs right now, this actually might be a nice place to start. And then elsewhere on this channel, you will find a lot more specifics about how to do that. <laughs> so first, as a reminder, doing a PhD is really different than getting an undergrad degree or even a master's degree. It's not so much about learning things that people already know as creating brand new knowledge. Original research, and this is a thing that I really tried to emphasize in my video about whether or not you should get a PhD. For example, this is why being good at school isn't a great reason to get a PhD. The kinds of things that make you good at doing classes are not necessarily the same things that you need to be a good researcher, which is what a PhD is mostly about. And if you've never seen Matt Mites' Illustrated Guide to a PhD, I'll link to it down below, check that out. But the basic gist of it is, if this circle is the sum of all human knowledge, you start out by learning a little bit about everything, your reading and writing, and then you start to specialize when you go to college, for example. And you start learning deeper and deeper about one thing. And the closer you get to a PhD and into your PhD, the deeper that learning on a specific topic is going until you break through just a little bit. By the time you finish a PhD, what you've done has very, very slightly expanded that circle and added something new to the sum of all human knowledge. And that little bump is your PhD. Sounds simple, right? <laughs> okay, but let's talk about what this actually looks like in practice. First, my usual caveat that some of the things I'm gonna talk about can be really different in different institutions, different countries, different disciplines. I'm gonna to try to be as general as possible, but my experiences are with universities in the United States and I am in a sort of computer science adjacent field. For example, the question of how long does it take to get a PhD? really varies. I know that in some countries that answer is about three years, in part because you have a master's degree from before that where you've done most of your coursework. In the US, one typical time frame might be five years. That's what it's like in my discipline for the most part. However, there are some disciplines or programs where four years is the norm or even as much as say seven. And even within a particular program, it'll probably take some students different amounts of time. But the best thing to do is to find out what is typical in your discipline and in your program. So with that, find out what if this actually applies to you caveat, let me give you the basics of PhD milestones. First, you get to spend some time figuring out what you're interested in at all. In a five-year PhD program, this is probably the first couple of years, you're taking classes and you're dipping your toe into research. This is a great time to collaborate with other people, to learn about things, to try out research projects in different areas to see what you like and what you're interested in. In different disciplines, in different programs, you might have more or less freedom in terms of the kind of research you're doing, but you're moving towards figuring out what it is that you want to add that knowledge to. And also as a reminder, as a PhD student, you take classes to learn the things that you need to learn to do your research, which really is the most important thing. And then a very common first milestone is some kind of exam. Sometimes these are called preliminary exams or qualifying exams or maybe something completely different. And what they look like is really different even in the exact same discipline in different programs. So I'm not going to try to guess what yours might be like, but I'll give you some examples. And with, again, say a five-year PhD, these tend to happen after year two at some point. 
A very common format is a written exam with questions. In my PhD, which was in human-centered computing, there were four questions that we had a total of 12 hours to do over two days. And some subset of those questions were shared among all the students in the program who were taking the exam at the exact same time, and some were specific to me. So that's one model. In my current program, where I am a faculty member, students do not take the exam at the same time. They do it when they feel ready for it, and the questions are tailored to that specific student written by a small committee. And they have five days to do that exam. I've also heard of programs where instead of a kind of formal exam, it's more like writing a paper. And I'm also guessing there are other models that I am not familiar with. Often there is some kind of oral component as well, a presentation and or a time to sit down with some faculty and for them to grill you a bit on your questions, to poke at your answers a bit. But whatever format it takes, the purpose of this is to make sure that you are making sufficient progress and that you have developed the base of knowledge for your discipline that's going to be necessary for you to move in to doing your dissertation research. It is, of course, possible for students to fail this exam and leave the program. In my experience, at least, this is very rare. You might have to, for example, do revisions. In some programs, you might have to retake the exam. And this is another question you can ask, is how often do people fail this exam? It might tell you something about the program. But it also can be a really good experience for figuring out how much you know and getting practice, explaining things, and just like really digging into your discipline. Typically in some time before this exam, you are doing a lot of reading. You probably have some kind of list of things to read from and might be shared by all the students in your department. It might be a specific reading list for you or something in between. But I have to say, as stressed out as I was about that exam, and let me show you a picture before and after, <laughs> as stressed out as I was, that time that I had to do all of that reading before that exam, I have never had that again. At least it feels like that, just this opportunity to feel like what I'm supposed to be doing more than anything else is to learn my discipline. Because even when you're doing research for your, because even when you're doing a literature review for your dissertation, it's more focused on a specific topic. And this was like, learn everything about human-centered computing. But after that milestone, it's time to start thinking about what that little bump on your knowledge circle is going to be. And this is moving towards the next milestone, which is your dissertation proposal. Again, it could be that this looks differently in some situations, but typically you assemble a committee. Assemble! And who that committee is can actually be really exciting and really important. And the makeup of that committee tends to be prescribed in some way. Most commonly, your advisor is the chair of the committee, and then there are some faculty from your program and some faculty from outside your program. This might be outside the department, outside the university. Everyone has different requirements. But it can actually be really exciting to think about who these people are. Who is going to help you be the best researcher that you can possibly be? And again, at some point I'll do a video specifically about dissertation proposals and maybe talk about some things you might want to consider in making that committee. Commonly, the proposal is both a document and a presentation. And that document, I've even seen it vary a lot in terms of what is typical for a particular program. It might be shorter, it might be quite long. In my case, and what I've seen most commonly for the students in our department, what you write for your proposal is actually going to end up as part of your dissertation because like your literature review and motivation and that kind of thing might actually be exactly the same. So why would it change? But really importantly, what you're going to do, right? And if you are in a discipline that is mostly about empirical research, it's going to be a really strong research design. And you give this document to your committee to read, and then you propose it to them in some kind of presentation. 
And after you're done, they tell you things that you should change or things that you should do differently. And then they say, if you do all of these things that you said you were going to do, we will give you a PhD when you are done with it. <laughs> and this can definitely feel like a hurdle, but also I can't think of another time in the rest of your career where a bunch of smart people sit in a room with you for a couple of hours just to tell you how to make your research better. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. So try to think of it as an opportunity. And after they sign off, you officially become a PhD candidate. And also if you finish your coursework by that point, you might be ABD, which means all but dissertation. And at this point, you get to go into dissertation tunnel mode. Now, when all of this is happening in your PhD varies a lot. I would say most commonly in a five-year PhD, I see proposals take place during year four, but sometimes it's year three, sometimes it's even the beginning of year five, and there are trade-offs to going particularly early to particularly late, and you don't know exactly what those are going to be. <laughs> Very situation dependent. But there's often not like a prescribed time for one to do their proposal. And then you write your dissertation. This might involve you doing a lot of empirical work first. You might have even already done some of it. For example, when I did my dissertation proposal, one of my chapters was a write-up of a study that I'd already done, and it became the first study in my dissertation. Or in some cases, you might be starting completely from scratch. And in some disciplines, your PhD is pretty much like a book. The individual pieces might not stand on their own, that well, it needs the long and cohesive narrative. In some disciplines, it's a little bit like paper stapled together. Of course, still with a narrative thread through them, it just means that individual studies can also stand alone. This is pretty common in my discipline in computer science adjacent fields. My dissertation, for example, started with a study that was in my proposal, and I believe the paper was under submission at the time I proposed. I then proposed doing three more studies, and in my final dissertation document, there are three chapters based on each of these studies. At the time I defended, one of them had already been submitted and accepted as a paper. One of them had been submitted as a paper and rejected, and I was planning to revise it. And one of them I wrote directly into a dissertation chapter as opposed to as a separate paper first. And the reason was basically because clock was ticking. <laughs> and I will say, because of that, once I finished my dissertation, I was not super motivated to turn that 16,000 word dissertation chapter into a reasonably sized paper of, say, eight or 10,000 words. And so I just kind of sat on it for a while. I did eventually publish it after a couple of years, but don't do that. <laughs> Get it all out of the way, because once you're done with your dissertation, you might not want to think about that work for a while. But even if you've already published parts of your dissertation by the time you defend, it still needs to be a strong, cohesive narrative. It needs to tell a story. The studies have to have something to do with each other. I mean, I assume. Maybe there's some disciplines where they don't care. I've heard of something called PhD by publication, and I don't actually completely know what that is. I think it might be more common in other countries, but I'm sure someone here on YouTube has done a video about it, so put it in the search bar. <laughs> and as with your proposal, you convene your committee, which is probably the same people. You give them a document. It's very scary, actually, to hand your dissertation over to your committee. <laughs> you give them time to read it, and then you do a defense, which is the culmination of everything. This is where you stand in front of at least your committee and maybe anyone else who wants to come and explain the little bump in human knowledge that you have added. And this is where your committee says, you did the things you told us you were gonna do. Here is your PhD. You might have heard something about snake fights. And at some point I'll probably do a video specifically about dissertation defenses, at which point I will explain that more. But if you're interested, I'll link to something down below. <laughs> and that's it. Once you defend, it's just all paperwork. People to sign off and say, you met your requirements, you passed your defense, here is your PhD. And usually you get like a fancy hat or a fancy hood, or apparently in some places a sword. I did not get a sword. Hmm.
and then you also have letters after your name. And then of course there's everything that comes after that. You may or may not have a job lined up when you finish. I hope you do. That's the best position to be in. But the other thing is that once you have defended your dissertation, you no longer have to be in dissertation tunnel mode. You actually get to start thinking about new little bumps that you get to make that are kind of adjacent to that one. And it's actually really exciting. <laughs> Anyway, that's the basic structure of a PhD, and I will be doing more videos about some of these specific components. Feel free to ask questions if you have them, or make suggestions for what I should make videos about. And if you are currently at one of these milestones or about to be there, good luck. I can't wait to see what you are going to add to human knowledge. And I'm Casey. Thanks for watching.